And uh, yeah, that woman basically messaged her with all the receipts and she was like, wow, okay, interesting. What's up you guys welcome back to the channel it's your girl jd here back with another video so this is finally going to be a recap for the 90 day fiance the other way season 5 tell all this is part one so there has been a lot going on this season with you know not all the couples but a couple of couples if that makes sense. <laughs> it was like maybe two or three in particular that had a lot of drama throughout the whole season, really. And of course, we're going to be talking about them today, or at least the couples that got to speak, you know, because not everybody got to speak in part one. So I didn't really bother making a recap specifically, you know, just about the last episode or two, because there wasn't really much happening there. Let's just dive right into it. Before the show, of course, they have individual conversations. The cast members have some things individually that they would like to say before they actually get into the lion's den with all the other couples. Now, Kenny, he was the first to talk, first to come in, and he claims that he doesn't really care about what everybody thinks about his and Armando's situation, about him having a child. He knows that people are probably going to think that he's absolutely, you know, crazy for doing what he's doing, but that's his choice that's what he decided to do I support it 100% you know if that's what you want to do and that's what your partner wants to do then go for it now Holly says that her relationship with Wayne is in a really confusing place right now and she is in New York and obviously he is in South Africa Okay, so um, some things probably happened, like we mentioned, well, like we mentioned, like I mentioned in the other video, the other recap, if you guys would like to check that out, I'll try to link it <laughs> in the corner, in the corner here, sorry. But basically, she had said in the other episode that she was trying to get back to the US and that she was tired of being in South Africa. She wanted Wayne to come with her. However, I think she was neglecting to realize that, um, you know, he is an American. He can't just up and go to America without a visa. There's a whole process, you know? So yeah, it looks as though she just was like, you know, screw it, I'ma just go to the US without ya. It's not looking so great. And yeah, she says she's coming with a lot of receipts because she's always been deemed as the villain. So in that very last episode, right before this tell all part one, she found out that Johan was cheating on her and was cheating on her their entire marriage, it looks like, or at least a good majority of their marriage. And uh, yeah, that woman basically messaged her with all the receipts and she was like, wow, okay. Interesting. According to Julio now, Julio steps in. He has not spoken to Kirsten at all since their breakup, their FaceTime conversation breakup. And she's been putting out a lot of lies, according to him, on social media. Kenny, Kenny thinks Holly is sweet, but really naive and easy to take advantage of. And apparently Shekinah feels that she needs to call out a lot of toxic couples, quote unquote. I'm kind of confused by that because I do think she was right when it comes to like some things and some couples but when she was like toxic couples i'm like girl have we been looking at your relationship this whole season or have you been blind like have you just been doing this like SZA said you know like i'm blind because <laughs> girl what when it came to some of the things that Shekinah had said, you know, about the other couple, she mentioned Danielle also with regards to Johan specifically in their relationship. She feels as though Danielle was coming into the relationship trying to change Johan, but I do think he had a lot of issues and things about him that were definitely red flags or red flag-ish. Also, you know, she did mention that Holly is always kind of running away from her problems and she needs to keep on her shoes. And I do agree with that, okay? I agree with both. <laughs> Now, according to Kimberly, no one's told her how much marriage is going to suck and how much it currently does suck. And she's sure that people are going to refer to her as spoiled and entitled, but she's going to tell them that their opinions are not welcomed. So sounds like in true fashion, you know, just ignore it. 
pretend like it didn't happen. Now, lastly, Shekinah also feels as though the way that Julio had treated Kirsten was kind of cold and harsh. And in response, he says that he kind of had that response because of reasons that we didn't really know about, some things that were going on behind the scenes. And he talks about that in the tell-all. So let's just jump right in, shall we? So we actually get the 90 Day Fiance, some of the OGs, they come in and they are gonna be weighing in on on some of the things that the couples have to say and that included Kalani, Andre, Tim, and Tanya. Now I have seen all of the seasons with all of them in it except for Tim. And I also don't remember what happened with Tanya's relationship. I can't remember who she was with. I know it was a, a South African guy but I can't remember his name. But yeah, just some things here and there. I just don't really fully know what happened with them. So now Sean comes in, you know, she has to do her little rounds, get everybody ready. She starts off with TJ and Kimberly. So TJ and Kimberly, they seem pretty cordial with each other. Brandon and Mary, they had their daughter. We find out they named her Midnight. Danielle and Johan, still separated. We don't really hear much from them until part two. Polly and Wayne, like I said already, she's been in the States, but we find out that she's actually been in the States for about four months. So they've lost a little bit of contact. For Wayne, it's definitely not been fun and it's kind of strange not having his wife with him and that's totally understandable. We don't really hear much about them until part two as well, it seems. Kenny and Armando, we don't really hear much about their relationship until you know, probably the next part or maybe even part three, I don't know. But they moved to Mexico City. And of course we know that they're moving ahead with having a child together. Sarper and Shekinah, apparently their relationship has been going pretty amazing lately. Kirsten and Julio, apparently Kirsten no longer has hateful feelings toward Julio, but instead feels nothing at all. And of course that was hella awkward, but I understand sis, I get it. So in this part one, we only really hear from TJ and Kimberly, Sarper and Shekinah, and also Kirsten and Julio. Let's dive into TJ and Kimberly first. So like I said, they're cordial with each other, but Sean brings up Kimberly's reaction to the whole apartment when she first came to India. So this is the apartment that she and TJ were supposed to be, you know, sharing together, living in together after they got married. Everyone, for the most part, kind of agrees that she definitely overreacted. Like as soon as she comes off the plane, this girl argues with TJ about everything that's going wrong with this apartment. And I'm just like, dang, you can't just give this man some type of kudos, some pat on the back, just to be like, you're doing a good job, thank you. You know, like it just came across as so ungrateful. Mostly everyone kind of agreed that she did come across as like, eh. You know, the delivery was terrible. Danielle was the only one that was concerned with the fact that he had to take out a loan to fix the place up. She wasn't concerned about the attitude that Kimberly, you know, was exuding. She was just concerned about the fact that he had to take out a loan of $12,000. But apparently TJ never really told her that he took out $12,000. He just said he took out a loan. So now she's just finding out that it was $12,000. So I think the communication, ew. Yeah, it's terrible. They actually bring in Jenny and Summit, who obviously we have talked about here on the channel several times already. <laughs> so they bring them in to weigh in on the whole situation because, you know, obviously TJ is from India. They have a similar cultural situation going on. So Jenny says that Kimberly seems really unappreciative and it kind of broke her heart when she said that she hated India or hated being in India or something like that. Now, of course, Kimberly has to say that her opinion, Jenny's opinion anyway, doesn't matter. And she starts laughing and it's kind of weird and it escalates to a point where basically Kimberly calls her the C word. And I'm very confused. I'm trying to figure out where that came from. I understood like she was probably a little agitated because Jenny just kept talking. But at the same time, that is your elder. Like, Jesus, who did you grow up with? So Armando kind of butts in and he says that to Kimberly that she's being really disrespectful. And I definitely agreed. Everybody else kind of stays silent, but Shekinah and Sarper are just laughing. And TJ, you could tell, is very uncomfortable. He's just like, well, you know, Kimberly's gonna be Kimberly. You could tell he was embarrassed as hell. Sean basically points out that Kimberly never really tries to de-escalate the situation. And Kenny had also said the same thing. And they kind of used the most recent example 
example of her basically screaming and having a whole meltdown. When it comes to Kimberly, she starts off really calm, but whenever she kind of gets, I guess, some of the responses that maybe TJ isn't really fully understanding what she's saying, she starts getting really agitated. And instead of continuing to use words and stay calm, she keeps doing this. And TJ, of course, keeps matching her energy. So they're both really immature in that aspect. And it just never ends. Kimberly kind of claims that it's because, you know, they have a lot of language and communication gaffes or, you know, some issues that maybe he just doesn't really understand what she's saying. But she also refers to TJ occasionally. I don't know if she's done it recently, but she would refer to him as Titty Baby. Mm hmm Titty Baby. But it also doesn't really help that TJ would also kind of leave for days after these fights, quote unquote, and he wouldn't speak to her for days. I think she said at one point he didn't speak to her for like almost three days. I'm like, what? I think the fact that his parents just live right beneath them is a problem because he could just run to them. And even in the last episode I saw after their fight, he just ran to his parents, well, specifically his mom and brother that he knows already has a problem with her. And he just kind of runs to them. It's just like, I've had it up to here with her. And his mom's just like, she should just go back to the US. And I'm just like, TJ, you already know your parents specifically your mom is going to be the one that's just like oh she needs to go back like i'm tired of her they're going to vent along with you because they already don't like her why would you take more information more ammo for them not to like her obviously kimberly i feel has very unlikable traits naturally but don't add to it you know what i mean so the fact that he could just run to his family whenever he has issues and she can't do that is really unfair and i think that yeah it's going to be interesting to see where where this goes but that's pretty much it for tj and kimberly now what i do find interesting though is that during the break kenny did ask kimberly if she regretted what she called jenny which was the c word and of course she says no which i expected but he kind of presses her on it and says that she kind of should and shekinah and kenny you know they both kind of think that she should have a little bit more humility and accountability when it comes to her actions and attitude. But however, Holly thinks that Kimberly is a very compassionate and loving person. But even Shekinah was like, it's not coming through. It's really not coming through. And I kind of backed that because I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? What are you seeing? Are we talking about the same woman? Obviously there were videos of Kimberly before she went over to India to get married to TJ where she was like really positive and really light and bubbly and kind of seemed like a fun type of person. But I personally think that it's kind of problematic obviously when you change so drastically. I understand when you get put in an environment that's different from what you're used to, how that could definitely be a lot and could definitely change a person. However, to change that much, Anyways, even TJ was like, I've never seen this person before, so it's it's worrisome. Kimberly says that it's very interesting that Shekinah is the one constantly pointing out things when it comes to other people's relationship and she's not really talking about hers. And I'm like, girl, I was thinking the same thing because I'm like, are you walking around like this? Anywho, after the break, we go into Sarper and Shekinah. So like I said, they seem to be in a good place. Shekinah says that this is the best relationship she's ever been in. And I'm like, girl, were your other relationships like absolute trash? <laughs> Anyways, so of course, Sarper takes his time to mention that this is his first relationship ever. And Mary, okay, Mary and Brandon didn't really have much to say in this segment, but she did whisper to Brandon that she kind of doubts that. And I kind of doubt it too, sis. I really do. The fact that your body count is like 2,500, even Sean brought that up. She was like, your sexual conquests. What is this 2,500 number? Like what? You really expect me to believe you had that many conquests and you only have one relationship and that's with Shekinah right now. Garbage. I don't believe that at all. So Armando, after hearing that number, he asked Sarper if he ever caught anything in terms of like STDs and whatnot. According to Shekinah, she requested that he get an STD test, but apparently she kind of asked every man to do that, but she did do one as well. So that's kind of what happened. Now, Sean brings up a few situations throughout the show that kind of occurred between the couple, like the time when he weighed her 
Y'all remember that? The altercation at the gym and also disrespecting her in front of her sister. So those were kind of the main points that I talked about in my video that I specifically did about them. If you guys want to check that out, I'll link it in the corner. She kind of asked him about that and Holly kind of comes in and she says that she feels that someone doesn't really care about her if they don't try to control her a little bit. And that definitely worried me and I think that worried a lot of other people from the other couples. I was confused. I was like, control you in what way? Holly like what even when they're apart apparently he still sends her voice notes so Sarper would send Shekinah voice notes and messages like for example the morning of this tell-all he sends her a voice note telling her how to behave how to look and what to eat like for example he sent me some this morning and they just told me like you know how to behave today how to look you know what to eat pretty much telling her if they give you options for food show me pictures of them and i could tell you what to eat oh i'm like losing my mind just even hearing it i'm sure everybody else was very confused obviously you know kalani even came in she was like girl you are brainwashed <laughs> Okay, like with the scrubbing board. She plays one of the voice notes and she claims that he says it in a really loving way. And I'm like, it kind of doesn't change much. It's still weird as hell, but okay, sis. So their relationship is clearly problematic and toxic, but they seem to be okay with that. So it kind of works in a really weird way. But they invited Shekinah's sister Shariah to come onto the show, but she declined because apparently her and Shekinah had a falling out prior to this tell-all. But she decided to pre-record a message and she was basically saying exactly what I had pretty much said in that video about Sarper and Shekinah with regards to her not really thinking that Sarper is the man for Shekinah and that it's just not gonna work out and I agree. Sarper, I feel like anything that I could say to you you're not going to be able to process it because you haven't developed mentally yet. My relationship with her is done. According to Shekinah, her relationship with her and her sisters and also her mom, so pretty much her entire family, are done because of her relationship with Sarper. Who in your family do you not talk to? There's six of us sisters. So six sisters. And my mom. I don't talk to my mom. And it's all because of your relationship with Sarper? Yes. And everyone kind of looks at that as a major red flag, and I do as well, because why are you cutting off family members? You know what I mean? I can understand you kind of cutting off friends here and there, but family members? Major red flag. Major red flag. Oh my God. I can't even express in words how much of a problem that is. The fact that now all you have is now Sarper. Mm. Anyways, we're just gonna move on, shall. I just don't know how much longer this relationship is gonna work. Now, Kirsten and Julio, they're gonna be our last couple that we talk about in this video. So their breakup call that they had over FaceTime, I believe, is played and Kirsten is clearly crying, but Julio is just kind of sitting there laughing. And even Kirsten's just like, why are you laughing while I'm in pain? And he agrees in the show. He's like, I could have handled that conversation a bit better. Tim kind of calls him out for misleading her for so long with regards to him saying that he was gonna come over to the Netherlands, move there, live with her. They were gonna get married. And Julio says that he was kind of looking at this misleading aspect as hope basically saying that he kind of held out hope that they were gonna hash out their trust issues or more specifically his trust issues because it definitely didn't really feel like Kirsten had much of an issue. It was more so him. So Sarper comes in and he just comes right out with it. He's just like, did she cheat on you? Like there's some parts missing. Did she cheat on you? Was there infidelity? And apparently, okay, she had a good friend that she was texting and he didn't really like that according to her. But he goes into more detail about it. He says he thinks she cheated on him, but he then presents some evidence to kind of back that up. And and according to Julio, she had gone dress shopping for an event that they were supposed to go to together. And in the pictures, he sees this man in the background, this friend of hers in one of the photos, right? And Julio says that he recorded a conversation between her and this guy on 
his phone. As soon as she saw that, she deleted it. So he decides to record a conversation that he has with her about the situation and pretty much asking her like, you know, don't you think this conversation is inappropriate that you're having with your friend? But we don't really get to hear much of her response to that until part two. And we also don't hear the voice um, recording until part two as well. So that's pretty much it for part one. There's a lot going on already. Definitely seems to be a lot of bombshells happening, especially when I saw the whole tell all. This is basically their preview of sorts. But y'all let me know your thoughts on part one down in the comments. Hopefully I could get this out before part two comes out. But if not, things happen. Okay, I tried. <laughs> but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.